Well, hello, 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 fellow CNCers. Not fellow, like girls and guys. And this is Garrett with IDC Woodcraft. And of course, we have Bill. Hey, Bill, say hi. Hey. Yeah, Bill's my Canadian buddy. I'm down here in Indiana in the States. And Bill is, what did I say, Ontario when I was wrong? What, correct me. Yeah, I mean, in New Brunswick. New Brunswick, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. East Coast. Yeah, so is there snow up there still? Uh, yes, we actually got uh, a little sprinkling last night and night before. Okay. It's been warm, but uh, today's, today's minus 21 Celsius with the wind. Oh, okay. It's, it's yeah. kind of balmy there today, then. Yeah. 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 So today is March fifteenth. What's that? I was just gonna say it was plus uh, plus eleven two days ago. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So you guys are the Celsius kind of guys. We have the uh, imperial p imperial system. Yeah. <laughs> Which makes no yeah. sense to me whatsoever. I I am such a metric lover, and I'm stuck <laughs> with the inch system. You know it. People, this is what I found throughout through my career is when when yeah you, know, you deal with inches you understand it right and then um, you're introduced to metrics and it's like a deer in the headlights but metrics are so easy compared to inches they make so much yeah. more sense yeah uh, but I do the, both do you yeah Just you have the way to. I grew up yep. Yeah. Yep. I prefer yeah. when I'm measuring or when I'm designing anything it's all in inches. Uh, I can switch back and forth pretty quickly until you get into the larger sizes. But when you're doing, I find when you're doing anything large and you've got to add 36 and 5 8 with 24 and 7 16, if, if that was in millimeters, it's easy just to add the two numbers. Right? It might be a ridiculous number like 2,412, but 2,412 is still easier than you know 78 and 15 16 right just, right but. yeah yeah you know what i guess that's the way it goes you get used to it you understand it and uh, we were talking about some of the challenges of doing cnc router work you know when when, when uh, you first get into it and the <laughs> the learning curve and the mistakes that come along with the learning curve and sometimes you sit back and just scream at that machine yeah i've actually done it <laughs> i bill have you ever been at that time when you sat there and just said i hate this machine i just hate it yep i've uh, i've had to walk away sometimes and just yeah. just come back in an hour or come back in a different day right right so that's what we want to talk to you about today is uh some of the challenges because when when beginners first start getting into cnc routers or any kind of cnc machine for that matter it's always comes across as uh appearing easy what did you say about youtube videos bill Sh share that again about YouTube you just videos. find that well everything you see on youtube has been pretty polished nobody not many people put out their failures and their experiences it's always you see the finished product and everything's perfect so when a lot of new people go to do something that they've seen on youtube they hit all the struggles and don't realize all the stuff that took place that never made it into the video <laughs> yeah yeah tell me about it i do a youtube channel and i tell you what bill the longer my videos are the longer it takes to put these things together and the more reshoots I have to do. The, just on that note, I mean, when it comes to making something a project, I know shooting video is not making something on the CNC router. However, it's the same thing. It's uh, my videos are, are somewhat polished. I try to not get into that. Hey, this is a perfect world out here, you know, because there, there's so many things that you know, people don't expect when they first get into this and one of those is that learning curve and all the mistakes you make along the way i got a great example that i just popped into my head when as soon as you said the youtube videos my first youtube video the one i made of the door hanger it was my first one i had no idea what i was doing but i put it all together and i was sitting down to edit the video 
and I realized I'd spelled the name wrong on the sign. And I didn't realize that until I had shot the whole video, or not shot, but I recorded myself making it. And there was no way in God's green earth I was going to go back and do it again. Right. So nobody notices because it's a simple spelling mistake. But in the video, the name is spelled wrong in the sign. <laughs> Interesting. Talk about projects, right? Uh, uh, and videos and CNC projects. So, so we'll talk about the projects and the frustration that come along with that. Is so I have a, a grid cutting program that, that for the Bob's CNC routers, right? The Evolution Four, where it cuts a two inch by two inch grid on the work bed, so that it makes it so much easier. If you if you have a CNC router, you, you got to cut a grid on your machine. <laughs> I'll try to put a link down in the description so you can go find that video too, so you understand exactly why you want a grid. However, uh. uh I had to shoot a video describing how to do that, just so people had that video walkthrough, as opposed to reading instructions. And I'm making the video. I got my camera on the bit, and I hit go, and that router bit started drilling into the bed because I didn't set up my zeros right. Uh, and, 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 yeah, it was like, oh my gosh. So you know, even even with all the experience, we still make mistakes. And you were saying just the other day you had a problem. What was it? Oh, I've had, you know what? I've had a f few problems in the last little while. Um, and one of the ones that sticks out to me was I was making a 3D carving. I have a new dust boot for my CNC, which, I mean, a dust boot is a dust boot, but I've had the old dust boot for two years. So the setup that I have and what I, what I was doing worked. I had a system in place that worked great. I've got a new dust boot that instead of having the dust extraction in the front, it has it in the back, which causes problems where it's hitting my clamps. And I was 60%, I was like four hours into a 3D curve when the dust boot hit my clamp and just screwed up the whole curve. Oh, oh that sucks. Yeah. That sucks. In a, in a, in a piece of walnut. So it wasn't a cheap piece of wood. But to make it worse, you know what? These things happen, you deal with them. I did it again. I put a new piece of walnut in. I was doing my roughing pass and I didn't tighten my bit tight enough. So I was watching it cut and I was thinking to myself, geez, that seems deep. And it kept on getting deeper and deeper until it clu I clued in like that something's wrong. So. I stopped the router, I lifted my z-axis, the bit fell out. So that that was number two. So on the third one, it, it finally did work, but I mean, mistakes happen, they happen to everybody. Yeah. The trick is is to learn from them and, 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 and to just move on. Don't get overwhelmed. I mean, it can get frustrating, but to just move forward. Yeah, you know, once you're on that third project like that, it, it kind of strips the joy out of the creation that the, all the effort you went through to kind of build that that particular project. And it, it, I'm smiling when you're telling me the story. I'm feeling your pain. That's why. It was uh, that, you know, we, we all do it. How many good pieces of wood <laughs> go up or get chalked up to a learning experience and then someday later we do the same thing again and it's just it's just part of the it's part of the journey of yep. never being perfect and and being able to step back and smile not let it take your spirit away from doing this stuff because even the pros make mistakes yeah, yeah. i wonder how much <laughs> wood has actually been trashed in, in my career with CNC machines at this point um, turned into firewood. Like how many pieces of nice oak and uh, <laughs> that have half a carve in it because the carve did exactly what you just said, where the the pit just decided to dig in further and further. I've got a cut in my spoil board that's a half an inch deep on a slope for the exact same reason. And I didn't even yeah. realize it until the machine started making all kinds of racket. And uh, by that point, it was working too much of the bit 
right? I mean, the bit had actually gone down far enough that the non-blade part of the shaft was pushing on the material and pushed the entire board out of position. And so that one was a complete waste. Fortunately, it was a cheapo job that I was just doing just to see how it worked out. I did it on OBS, that, that, that what, that particle board, that real loose particle board. And by the way, I, I, yep. don't, I don't really recommend using that stuff. I tried it for a little while. It's, it, it's got a lot of, it's got more glue in it than it has wood. Yeah, I mean, and it's, you don't know what that wood is either. It's all, it's just scrap. Yeah, wood. yeah, and anything you make out of that, it's, it's gonna be garbage. Great for testing, but it's also hard on bits. It is, it's really hard on bits. In fact, I went through a carbide bit, a quarter inch carbide upcut important with that stuff in uh, a tenth of the time that that bit should have worn out because because I don't know it's maybe my feeds were off you know this was a little early on when I was messing with this stuff I guess the feeds were off the the, the glue I know the glue had a big issue do you ever notice that with plywood when you're cutting plywood relative to a full sheet of hardwood or something well I use I use real baltic birch like cabinet grade plywood so it normally has a consistent the plies are consistent the material is consistent uh the glue is consistent so what i normally do is if i have a bit for plywood that that bit is for plywood i don't i don't switch it back and forth because i find uh, almost depending on what material you cut if i have a bit that i, I cut uh hardwood in i keep that cut bit for hardwood if i have a cut that i use i cut acrylic that bit is for acrylic because i found in my experience over the years that if you start switching bits back and forth different materials wear the bit differently and it, i just get a better life if i just keep one bit for one particular material interesting i've not got myself to that kind of point so how would you suggest uh, someone who's just getting into cnc handle that you know, they're just investing in router bits. And speaking of router bits, if you don't have router bits, if you're in Canada, go look Bill up uh, at cncbits.ca. He sells entire sets. We both sell the same set. He tackled the U.S., I tackled the, the States, because there are no complete sets out there for the beginner. So uh, down in the description of this podcast, you can go check that out if you're looking for router bits and want to know exactly everything you need to know. That's a good sidestep, Bill, because I think the journey into CNC routers all the way along, you, you're constantly coming up against little frustrating elements, especially when you're new and everything looks pretty and shiny from the novice perspective, and they're just buying a machine, and then as they get into it, just all these things keep popping up. And Here. one of the things down the road is the mistakes along the way in your projects. But even right up front, when it comes to router there's, bits. There's so much to learn. There's so much to learn. Yeah. Uh, and everybody sees, you know, we'll go back to YouTube, but it's not necessarily YouTube, but, but realistically, that's where most people see this stuff. YouTube, Etsy, whatever. Um, they see the finished product. They see the machine and think, how hard can it be? Uh, it really does, you know, it does take a learning curve. Uh -huh. Yeah. The trick is, is not to get discouraged and give up. Yeah. Well, you know, Everybody you know something, Bill, that, that's one of the things that uh, I know you realize that we've talked about this is there's a lot of people out there that want that help. There's no like one on one. Show me what to do to get from point A to point B. And so that's part of the frustration, I think. And that's why I've set up one on ones where people can schedule time with me and I will teach them. Right. Yeah. You know, I, I think some people get frustrated because I charge for that. But, you know, it's, <laughs> well, it's it's the the day and age where there's so much information out there. Uh, you know, people expect an easy answer. And, and sometimes when that easy answer isn't there, it, it can be frustrating and overwhelming. Um, but there's just the problem with nowadays is there's so many options. There's so many different machines. There's so many different types of CNC bits. There's so many different materials. There's you know different programs it's almost impossible to be able to give somebody a one answer you know a one 
sentence answer to their question because there's uh, you, so many variables can't. nowadays so you can't, no, you you can't. can't. No. yeah as a fact just on that note you know i was telling uh, you know, i do the one-on-ones i've got someone who is scheduling time with me where well, we're going to go through the open builds website together because they're so green that we're going to walk through what is he looking for what what's his budget um what does he you know what's the long-term picture that he has and we'll build the machine on open builds with him and and so uh, that's just part of the, that's just part of the picture it, and um yeah then, then I, <laughs> and we kind of got off track with the making the mistakes with the projects but i think that's all part of the entire journey when you're first getting into it it's um there are frustrations i learned i learned by making mistakes yeah that's just my my you know learning capabilities i guess Yes, I mean, I learned by watching videos, but I learned by making mistakes. And I've been in the business somewhat, you know, self-employed, you know, before I worked for myself, I worked for my parents. And I ha I've had several employees over the years. And I always, people learn by making mistakes. If you screw up a hundred dollar piece of wood, you learn pretty quickly not to do that mistake again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, if you could chalk one mistake up as your biggest worst mistake, what would it be? <laughs> comes to a project. Uh, well, I mean, one comes to mind. I don't know if it really applies, but years ago, uh, I was cutting a four by eight contoured map. So it was like an aerial. Um, topographical map for a museum and it was our, our area our city uh, so it was full it was just slightly smaller than four by eight it was cut out of inch two pieces of MDF glued together so it was inch and a half MDF and the carve time was ridiculous um, we started at eight o'clock in the morning and by like six o'clock that night it was still running so we decided to to leave it run overnight and what had happened is it actually it ran fine overnight but it overwhelmed the dust collection so when i came in the next morning there was so much dust because the dust collection just it got full and couldn't take the dust in there was dust everywhere in the shop and there was so much dust and interference it actually uh moved the the head over because of the resistance and ruined the project oh wow that's uh yeah that's pretty substantial that's so well and i mean <laughs> looking back that that could have that was mdf that could have caused a fire that could have burned down you know we were in a commercial building with seven other tenants i mean that yeah. could have burned everything down that was that was the bad that was a bad mistake Ooh, yeah that's one of those ones that scares you you still when you think about it you still get shivers that's uh, yeah i get that and that's an interesting little side note. I've seen it a lot where people have asked about putting heat in their shops. Uh, they're concerned about flash fires and what have you. And one of the things is typically if you got a good dust collection system, you're not going to get enough dust in there. In fact, it takes a lot of dust in the air to create a flash fire. And so as long as you're not doing what builds yeah, friction, <laughs> then yeah. you're okay. But friction too, right? All right. Well, I friction, mean, you've got a lot of different friction in wood. On there. Yeah. You got a motor that could have gotten very hot because it's getting crap in it, right? Um, yeah, there's a lot of things. Well, if you get, you know, MDF might. I mean, MDF dust on its own is quite flammable. But if you get a, a, a kiln dried piece of pine and a router bit that's rotating in a spot, I mean, think of people that start fires with wooden sticks. You know and spin them back and forth you're doing that times a thousand so i mean it's quite possible to start a fire yeah yeah interesting interesting huh. you know i don't i've got quite a few projects that that went to waste the one that really kind of got me was uh, that sign i was just talking about that i uh, i was telling you on the side i made a sign for someone and it it was a learning curve of learning curves 
they wanted a sign. They didn't really have a good definition on it, but they knew exactly what they wanted. It's got a nice logo. It's got a lot of heart to it. And I just wasn't sure how to do it, but I wanted to make the sign pop. It had this tree on it and leaves on the tree, but all the leaves were individualized. And so I imported a bit map, you know, as a bit map and put vectors over it. And then I, I ended up tweaking every single one of those leaves. I mean, we're talking probably 12 hours worth of work. And then uh, I, I did it in a carve where everything else was recessed except for the tree and the leaves. And these leaves, I mean, some of them are eighth of an inch in size, right? <laughs> that's that's small. And I'm, I'm running around on this, this nice piece of wood and these leaves are just chipping off like... <laughs> It's, yeah. it's like it's like it's in the fall <laughs> yeah. and yeah. uh, so I, I was uh, frustrated so I went back to the drawing board tried it on that OSP which I, at least it showed me what was going on because I could watch it and I just finally said you know what this is ridiculous I'm going to do it all in a v-carve style where all the cuts were uh, recessed instead of the opposite and that works out so much better it's so much faster by the way um but i went through four full blown cuts to get to that point and each 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 side because of the leaves and the small detail i had to work with a 16th inch bit for a good chunk of it so you're, you're talking four to five hours per 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 loss <laughs> if you will I mean, there's a lot of time involved in some of the stuff, and it doesn't take much to uh, to ruin it. Right, but the, the good the good thing is I did take it as a learning curve, right? I I, I learned that when you get down to a certain size, you've got to rethink your strategy, uh, or or no, you have to learn the boundaries of what will work and what won't work relative to what you're trying to achieve. And that's part of the learning curve that can be really frustrating. That's what happened to me with that project. Well, I had to stop for just a moment and talk about this podcast service that I use. It's called Anchor. And the reason I like to use it is because it's free. That's the first reason. Second reason is I get to talk about what I love and I can get paid for it. And I actually do. That's like, it's a no brainer, right? And you can talk about anything that you love to do. I would say get on anchor, talk about whatever you want to talk about, because it's going to spread out to the world. They spread this stuff out to all the platforms and it takes you 15 minutes. Anyway, I love talking about CNC. So let's get back to it. Made a similar mistake the other day with a uh, small V curving of text where I chose the wrong degree of bit just by my own lack of inattention or lack of attention, I guess. Uh, I put in a 90 degree when it should have a 60 and just that little difference made the text pretty much unreadable. Hmm. Well, you were able to go back and put a 60 in a reprogrammer, weren't you? Nope. I oh. started cutting. I started cutting and it started cutting the text and it basically, uh, the text was small enough where like the A, for example, where the, the circle on the inside of the A, that, that extra little degree made it basically a point. Um, oh. And I still had to paint it and finish it. It just, it was, it wasn't acceptable for me. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, one one problem I think a lot of people run into. They, what, what's the transition point of the angles? That's just another part of the learning curve and the frustration when, when you do that. Every CNC or goes through that too, where they grab the wrong degree. They either grab one that's too steep, and then they end up cutting like uh, three quarters of the way through the board for a letter. <laughs> Have you done that one before? Yeah. Or, or one is too shallow? and it, it, it screws it up and that's just a good way to get around that i've seen people actually create their uh, like a little gauge uh, where they type yep, a v-bit gauge kind yep, of yep yep different, well, different actually, depths different degrees yeah, yep. yeah they can actually cut it into, into wood and it just gives you a good general idea of what you're going to be getting out of it 
was just saying one thing that I, I used to do and I should do more of it, but once you, once you get used to it a little bit, you kind of know what you're looking at. But I used to do a test before any small text like that, I would do a test in MDF. Just take your bit and cut the text out and make sure it's actually readable and it's what you want rather than sticking you know like for example i engrave names in, in cutting boards if i stick a 120 dollars cutting board underneath that cnc you better be sure that i know it's going to carve the way i want it to yeah yeah that's actually not bad to do whatsoever i have spare scrap wood that i use just to do that or i'll if i'm not sure i'll actually pick out a letter or a word at that size just carve that to see what it looks like and make sure i'm in the right ballpark with it and that has saved me a number of scrap jobs as well. Um, one of the things I see online that I wish more people would do, I see a lot of examples of people with like nice wood. Like if somebody's doing their first inlay into a cutting board, an angry cutting board, they didn't test it first. He just goes and slaps a piece of walnut in grain cutting board that he spent hours and who knows how much money on, and then does the test and inlay without without testing it well why wouldn't you just take the time and do a test in pine to ensure that that you're doing it right so if you just take a little bit extra time and do a test make sure that whatever you're trying to do is going to work in your application before you put your your finished product under there that's just one way to you know curve that a little bit i can't tell you how much time that has saved me by doing that <laughs> so much it's inlays that's uh, getting a little more advanced uh, have you done some inlays uh, I've done a couple when I first got my machine I started playing around with it I never got it to the point where I was happy with it um, I just I stopped because I moved on to something else I understand how it works I just haven't had to, uh, to do them yet yeah well, that's one of the things when it comes to business, too. Are you in the CNC router world as a hobby or as a business? And and if you're in either one of those, then you have to be a little more clear. For me, I'm not in business for inlays, right? I'm in business to teach people and to help people make an income with their CNC machines. And, uh, right. Yeah. It's great. And it's great if you're trying to develop a new product and you have time, but I'm quite busy and I've got so many products I, I want to do I, I'd love to do them uh, it's just not something that I sell right now it's just not on the list so at some point in time I'll get around to it yeah yep got it but like you said would you know if it's a business and you're moving forward with the business it's it's great to to have fun and play around but it's a great way to learn also right yeah absolutely yeah uh, I'm, you know it's it, it's a hobby too so and it's a wonderful hobby to have but you know getting back around <laughs> you're gonna make mistakes adjust what's gonna happen and and that to step back why did i do this and how do i keep myself from doing it next time and usually the thing that stops us from making a mistake again is the pain of the mistake <laughs> you know and when, when the more painful the mistake is the more likely that won't happen again yeah and i mean for me as well i've got a pretty good system down for some of the products that i sell like the door hangers for example i pre-cut my material down to a certain size, I have the product streamlined, and every time I screw up a door hanger, I look at it and I say, well, there's, you know, that's $50 worth of profit gone. It didn't cost me $50, the material didn't cost me that, the time didn't cost me that, but, you know, once you start looking at things that way, you know, is it gonna, it's just gonna go onto the scrap pile into the fire pit. Right. So, yeah, but that is the way to look at it too. If you're in a business, then, then you have to look at it from a different angle and a different mindset of it is profit. You know, that's yeah. what business is about. profit. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, uh, you know, I, I don't, can't think of any other projects off the cuff that I've run into a lot of mistakes with, you know, or, or the frustrations, but I can't say that along the entire journey of your CNC experience, as you're coming in from a beginner's perspective, no matter 
what you want to make of it, whether it's a hobby or business, there is that learning curve and there are going to be those mistakes and it's not your fault. It's just very normal that we go through it to learn the techniques and don't beat yourself up. You learn and you grow. It's like anything else. So you're basically coming in like a baby and all babies have to learn to walk. And yep. you know, I haven't run into a person yet that tried to discourage a baby from walking. <laughs> you know, so so the, the, the moral of that is both Bill and I are encouraging you to work with it. Yes, you're going to fall, but you're going to grow with it as, as well. If you start to see it as... And ask questions, right? What's that? Ask questions. That's what, ask questions. That's what we're yeah, here for. It's, yeah. Everybody, yeah. everybody learns differently. Some, some people learn by trial and error. Some people learn by asking questions. Some people learn by reading. Some people learn by watching videos. You know, it's a combination of everything. Uh, and, and there's just, there's so much with these machines that not, you can't just learn everything at once. It takes years. It takes time. So just be patient. Yeah. Don't get, don't get frustrated and overwhelmed. If you need to step away for a few hours, step away. Come back at it the next day with a fresh mind. Sometimes right. that's the best way. Just thinking of things overnight, or, or just letting your mind relax on something else. You know, the answers will come to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, the other thing I want to say is, don't. You're not going to be able to make amazing projects right off the bat. And it's going to take a while to work up to that and accept that, that that's, that's the journey and the mistakes are part of getting there. And so long as you stick with it and say, damn it, I'm going to do this and I'm going to figure it out, then, then you will. And you'll be making some pretty amazing projects in no time. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, I mean, right now, now this day and age with the internet and all the Facebook groups, it makes it easier on one hand to learn, to have the access to all this information, but it also, it can be overwhelming and it can lead, you know, people can get the wrong answers just because you're on a Facebook group and somebody tells you something, don't take that as gospel. Don't, don't take that as, you know, well, this guy told me this is what it is because not, not everybody knows a lot and not everybody has the same setup that you have what works for me might not work for you yeah that's that's, That's a really good point when in in the facebook groups especially like the uh beginners type of groups uh, you see it i see it where people do come in and ask questions which machine should i get what do you recommend and there's so many different answers and sometimes it makes life more frustrating and confusing and that's why it's better to grab one or two people uh, that know what they're doing. Me and Bill. I, uh, I mean, you can just call us. <laughs> yeah, no, we don't always know what we're doing. You know, we're we've been in, down the road with this stuff, but we're still learning too. Uh, but you want to you want to just get a couple people that are gonna help you through it, so you don't get all the noise, and you can avoid a lot of frustration that way. Because when you put it out in the Facebook group, sometimes you are gonna get more overwhelmed. That rather than get answers, <laughs> would you agree? Oh yes, definitely. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, oh, what do you call them? You know, computer jockeys. There's a lot of people that just sit there waiting for somebody to post in some of these groups. But you know, it, it you just have to take it objectively and just kind of take the information you see and, and try it out. Uh, uh, but like I said, don't take it. You know as gospel right right and you'll figure out your own techniques and your own stuff along the way yeah and another thing i mean the the software nowadays can be completely overwhelming i I find it overwhelming sometimes and i've got a lot of the plug and play stuff but you know it's one of those things where if you type in a value and you, you you think you're clicking all the right buttons and it doesn't do what you think it's supposed to do, it it gets really frustrating. Um, And one way to think about it is these machines do exactly what they're told. So the machine just doesn't decide to cut an inch deep when you told it to cut half of an inch. 
something in there is telling the machine to do that. So just keep that in mind and go back and just retrace your steps and, and just think of it that way. It's not the machine's fault. You've told the machine to do that. You just didn't realize it. Yeah, yeah, that's it. You just didn't realize it. And so that's part of the learning curve. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I think if I could sum this up, is life is life and no matter what you venture into <laughs> in this case being cnc it's going to be frustrating at times there's, uh, there's going to be times where uh, unusable public words come out of your mouth right <laughs> and <laughs> and um there's going to be other times where you're going to be have that feeling of a lot of reward because you've learned something and you've taken that lesson and you've created something entirely new and entirely different. So remember there's a good side to all this and that's why we're in it in the first place, to be creative. And, it, and the career, those creative juices, they just, they have to form and mold into, into whatever it is that's gonna come out of you. And sometimes the road's bumpy. I remember seeing a picture once, Bill, uh, my mentor showed this to me. They said people who want to get from point A to point B often think it's a nice gentle bicycle ride up a nice gentle slope. And that's what the picture was, a very gentle slope, somebody riding on a bicycle and the slope was nice and flat and even. And, and then they said, this is what it actually is. And it was like mountains and valleys and ladders and, and, and alligators on the picture. You know, the, the journey to get to where you want to get is not an easy, it, it's, it's not a smooth ride, but it's a rewarding ride by virtue of taking all those bumps and bruises and working through them. Yeah, it's not a straight line. You know, and if it was easy, you know, like they say, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. All right. So if you struggle and you're not getting anywhere, you can email Bill or I, and we'll be more than happy to give you some guidance in this whole journey of CNC, this amazing world of creation. And uh, we're, we're, you can make beautiful things for yourself for someone else you can make money with it it's just a journey to get there and enjoy it enjoy the journey it's probably the last thing i could say to wrap up this podcast what about you bill what do you want to wrap up one thing i just like to tell you is that everything takes time uh, you know a lot of people get their machines and they get really excited and they think you know, within the next month, they're going to be pumping out signs and they're going to be a millionaire, but it all takes time. And I mean, I've been doing this for years and I'm, I'm still figuring this out. You know, it, times change, the market change, products change, technology changes. So, you know, it, it really takes time. And, and as soon as you realize that, then, you know, it, it kind of puts things into perspective. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. Well, thank you for hanging around this podcast where we bounced around a little bit, but overall, we just tried to talk about the getting over the frustration of the journey and, and being okay with your mistakes and knowing that mistakes are a lesson to make you a better CNC or in the end, in whatever way, shape, or form that you want to create your projects. So enjoy it and let that creative juice come out of you and make amazing stuff and show it to the world. Well, this is Garrett, IDC Woodcraft, and Bill. Yeah, Bill Keys, you can uh, just send me an email if you'd like. Uh, Bill at cncbits.ca, and that's the website. Yep. Or, you know, find us on Facebook. Yep, Facebook, yeah, where can you, where can you find us? So, CNC Entrepreneurs, and uh, CNC for Beginners, we're kind of all over the place, but those are the two primary groups where we hang out at. CNC for Beginners, CNC Router for Beginners, you guys changed the name of it. So CNC Routers for Beginners and CNC Entrepreneurs. All right. And I'm also the uh, Canadian CNC users on Facebook. Which one? That's my group. Uh, Canadian CNC users on Facebook. Oh, mine as well. I didn't know that. I'll have to join that one. Can I join it, Bill? I'm in the States. No, well, thanks a lot. No, I'm just joking. No, no, <laughs> anyone's welcome. Right, right. 
you know what? I'll t- I want to say something too. This is just like my own personal rant for having. I'm a member and a moderator of several Facebook groups. If you're trying to join a Facebook group and there's questions, answer the question. Yeah. <laughs> or or you're not getting them. It's just that simple. There's so many spammers on Facebook joining groups and the first post is just spam, spam, spam. Yeah. That if you don't answer a question to a Facebook group, chances are you're not going to get in. Yeah. yeah. I can't tell you how many people I've declined out of CNC entrepreneurs simply because they don't do that. They don't, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that there are some that just don't read through the thing. They just think there's, there's a button there to sign up. And it, it doesn't matter how loud you make the text to fill out the questions or you don't get in. They still do it. And it kind of breaks my heart because I know that there are some people out there that are genuine, but there are a lot of spammers out there too. And that's why that's, that's there. Make sure you take that moment just to answer the questions. Let them know you're a real person. And uh, then, then you'll be let in. Bill, Bill is a moderator on these groups. I'm a moderator on the groups and that's the way we operate. You know, it's, uh, yeah. The, the whole concept, the whole mindset on this end of see, the Facebook groups is if a person can't take the time just to do that, how uh, how much interest do they really have in doing this kind of stuff? And the, the perception is they're just not very serious about it. You know, and on the same token, we're checking for spammers and spammers yeah. do show up. <laughs> Every day. To show up. Yep. I get it on my YouTube channel. I had people yesterday, they were spamming all the comments. They would, uh, they'd say, I don't care. I don't know if anybody really cares, but uh, I, I use this program to infiltrate my girlfriend's Instagram. And then they would yeah. come in with a separate account. And someone would say, wow, that worked in 10 minutes. I got it too. So I had to go through my comments and get all them, you know, reported as spam and phishing and, and all the other kind of stuff. It just happens. This is life. But that's, that's the new thing where there's two people, they act like it's a comment back and forth. uh, Mm -hmm. Anyway, this is not, that's not really, (laughs) but that's just, but, but it's, uh, yeah, but I mean, it's part of why, why you want to answer these questions. You know, we yep. want to know you're a real person. So answer the question in the way that the question is stated. All right. Well, I think we said enough. That was a, that was a little good rant and rave. Um, yeah. yeah. Enjoy the journey. CNC is an amazing world. And there's a click of people in it that love to create. And, and the majority of them want to help each other to uh, grow and be better creators. All right. Well, I've kind of said everything I need to say today. What about you, Bill? Oh. All right. Well, thank you for taking out some time in this podcast and know that CNC is a fun thing to do. And uh, I hope you have a great day and a better tomorrow. And let those creative juices flow. This is Garrett and Bill. And we will talk to you next time.